Hey guys, and this is in 4K. I decided to start doing some Proteal Loop tutorials for you guys. I plan to start at the very beginning explaining some of uh, the layouts and the basics of Photo Studio 9. In this first part, I'm gonna be reviewing some basic stuff. Also, I'm going to be reviewing some basic tools that Proteal Loop offers some knobs, sample manipulation, and so on and so on. Even if you have used for tools before and you are using it now, I advise you to watch through this episode because there might be some things you missed. Because FL Studio is a big program. I personally have been working with it for maybe around five to six years now. And I'm still discovering some new stuff I could have been using a long time ago. And it would have made my life a whole lot easier. So yeah, let's get, let's get right down to it. First I'm gonna re review the option dialog and that's all I'm gonna be reviewing from up here in the menu. In the menu. Uh, let's start with the MIDI settings. If you had a MIDI controller of any kind, this is the place you want to be. I'm not gonna review this section because I don't have my MIDI controller with me right now, but we'll get into that in, um, another, in another part. This is the audio tab. Up here you choose the input output drivers. I have asked you for all installed, but I prefer to use my default settings. Right here in the mixer tab you have a sample rate, so you don't need to bother with this, and you have interpolation. Basically interpolation uh, here in the mixer tab points out the quality of sound you will experience while working in a 40 loops live. I advise you to stay between 60, uh, 64 to 128 point sync. If you have a faster machine you can go to 5 to 12 point sync with no problem. But if you have a machine like mine that's not so um, high tech, not so high end, uh, you can keep to this. If you have a really low end machine you can go down to 6 point hermit or linear but that's really gonna make your experience a whole lot uh, worse. Later you can export it to 512 point sync it will sound better but it will sound a whole lot different to what you hear. So yeah basically stay within these parameters if uh, you can. On the left here you have the buffer length. Basically what this is, is uh, this is your latency control. Like if I play a sample here left on the sample bar or whatever, when I click on it, there's gonna be a latency of uh, like it says here 42 milliseconds. That's not so bad. This affects the processor load a whole lot. So if you have a medium machine like three to six years old, you can easily without a problem go to 20 25 milliseconds latency with 128 point sync. If you have a newer sound card like um, Creative Fx or, or or whatever, it has a built in thing logic, whatever. You can, even if you have a slow processor, you can go down to 6 milliseconds. But as you see, if I go down to 6 milliseconds, this underrun starts pumping up. And if I play a sound, you see what happens. Basically, this underrun is your buffer. You don't want it going up, you don't want it moving, you want it to stay put to not make underruns. So basically you have to find your your ideal latency as minimal as possible but as, uh, but to not cause underruns. I found 20 to 25 as I said in the seconds to be ideal. Uh, down here you have some controls, use pooling, use hardware buffer, use 32-bit uh, buffer, uh, basically this can cannot improve your experience, your CPU load and whatever, but that heavily depends on your system, so you can just click it, unclick it, click it, unclick it, see what it does. As, as you see for me, this, uh, you, this automatically starts making underruns, which is bad, so I turn it off. Use 22 bit buffer, nothing happens, but I found it, it didn't improve anything, so, so yeah. Uh, Multi-thread generator processing if you have a dual core like me, uh, but mine is a really old dual core. But yeah, basically if you have a um, multi-core processor you want these, these two uh, turned on. Multi-thread gener uh, generator processing, multi-thread mixer processing. Smart disable, you can turn this turn off on if it makes your life easier, do it. I'm just gonna go, go to 20 to... Actually, it's 30 milliseconds because Camtasia Studio is uh, kind of high RAM load. Anyway, uh, onto the general tab. Basically, this is uh, this have 
fast little thing magics, not nothing really major. Use tablet to see for digitaling digitaling stars. If you have a tablet you can um paint some stuff or we'll get into that later on. Ultra smooth visual feedback if you have a good video card. And if you feel um I to use sort sort of glitchy. Smart scroll, uh, smooth scrolling and so on and so on and so on. Don't limit window to screen. This basically means this. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Onto the file menu. This is where you set your sample fo folder. You just click on something, find your sample fo folder, and click it. I advise you to have one sample fo folder like me, all samples, and then just. Uh, categorize them in different um, folders make, makes it a whole lot easier because there's some built in here stuff that for Lipson makes it a little, a little um, unfriendly to navigate to your samples if you have a lot of folders here. This is uh, your VST uh, folder and this is set by default usually by NFL Studio but if you have additional VSTs and you've seen them some, somewhere else you can change this to, that's not a problem the built-in VSTs of NFL Studio will still function no matter what this is down here in the project you have uh, info, genre, author, blah de blah de blah stuff I really never use here you have bar 4, beat 5, basically what this does is you can make something else than the usual 4x4 beat you can make it 4x6, you can experiment 6x6 and 6x3 and blah de blah de blah If you feel like experimenting with different um, beat thingies like 7 8 uh, sort of more um, Eastern European stuff, you can experiment with this Okay, uh, that's done 